The Log Cabin block is a traditional quilt block that can easily be tailored to your likes. Whether you use skinny strips or wide strips, you're essentially only using squares and rectangles to construct your quilt block. Whether you want a more modern look or a traditional look, it's up to you. The Log Cabin block is a perfect beginner-friendly project. You're simply sewing strip by strip. There's no seams to match or nest. You simply just sew one block to the next. And there's no need for any special skills or rulers. Hey there, it's me, Ladine from Sugar Stitches Quilt Co. I create video tutorials to help you become a better quilter. In this video, not only will we make the log cabin block together, but I'll also give you some tips and techniques to construct the block more efficiently and in an organized manner. We'll also talk about other tips to help you become more confident in creating your own layout with the log cabin construction. So if you're ready to make a scrappy jelly roll log cabin block with me, then let's get started. In this tutorial, I'll be using this beautiful Tilda Fabrics Pie in the Sky Collection Jelly Roll. The strips in a jelly roll are two and a half inches wide and the length will vary depending on the manufacturer, usually between 40 and 42 inches long. If you have a jelly roll, then it's perfect for making sure that you have a great distribution of colors and patterns within the collection. But if you don't have a jelly roll, you can use yardage, fat quarters, or even your stash. You can simply cut your strips at two and a half inches wide and then only your length will vary. I'll give you the cutting instructions needed to construct a log cabin block that I'll show you today and you can choose your fabric according to those instructions. Before we get started there are two important tips I have for you when making a log cabin quilt block. First, an accurate quarter inch seam is key. If you need help with this I have a linked video in the description below to help you achieve an accurate quarter inch or scant quarter inch seam in your sewing. This is so important because we are piecing several strips and an incorrect seam allowance can really impact your block size and minor errors add up to large ones. Number two, as you are maintaining your proper seam allowance, ensure that you are evenly sewing your strips to the next. Constructing a log cabin block can get off quickly and then you end up with a crooked or wonky block. Best suggestions for success are to check your seam allowances, measure sections after being sewn together, and then trim as you go if needed. You can also make a more traditional log cabin block like this one. The layout is with light and dark fabrics alternating, giving a diagonal layout to your fabrics and the look of your block. And this is also a block where I made the strips smaller than the two and a half inches wide that we're going to use today. I made this block from my scraps. I chose a two and a half inch square center and then my strips are narrower at one and a half inches and then they were sewn around my center square in a clockwise direction. Using this method you'll need two light strips and then two dark strips and then you'll continue on in the same manner. This is why I mentioned that a log cabin block is so versatile. Your strips don't even have to be the same width if you choose. You could use one and a half inch strips and then use a smaller or a larger strip after that. The only thing that matters is the length so that you're matching up the block that you're sewing to. And I'll show you more as we begin constructing the block today. But no matter what size you choose for your strips, the construction will always be the same. For this quilt block, you'll need your basic sewing supplies. The construction of a log cabin quilt block is rather straightforward. You start in the center with a square piece of fabric. From the center, we sew strip rectangles all around, all moving in a clockwise direction. When you are just starting out, it's helpful to have a diagram of your labeled blocks and fabrics for reference as you are constructing your block. As you become more comfortable with the process, you may not need the diagram. Okay, now we'll take our jelly roll and go ahead and open it up. And as I mentioned, we're making a scrappy version with this today. So I want to be able to alternate my lengths in the block. Look at these fabrics, how beautiful. So this will give me a nice scrappy look. Also, as you become more familiar with the process of constructing a log cabin block, you can cut your fabric strips as you go sewing through your block. You could also use the quilt as you go method with this block. It really helps the project come together much more quickly. 
In this tutorial, I will be showing you the method with cutting all of my fabrics ahead of time and labeling them. We'll save the other fun methods for another video. Now what we'll do is go through the jelly roll and because there's so much variety, we want to narrow down what we need for one particular block. We need a total of 13 strips and squares for the 14 inch block that I'm going to show you today. You'll need to decide if you want some of these patterns to repeat in the layout or if you want them all to be individual. My recommendation if you're using a jelly roll or any type of pre-cut is that you go through and see which fabrics are repeated before you decide on a design layout. So for example, I have two strips of this print which are the same. So I'll put one of these aside for right now as I'm just planning one block. And I'll go through the rest of the jelly roll in the same way. I've gone through and separated all of the different strips and in this particular collection you had two strips of the same fabric so there were 40 strips total so that means I have 20 individual fabrics in the collection to work with here. As I mentioned, we need 13 different strips for this log cabin, this just scrappy version. So I'm going to choose 13 different prints to work with so that they are all different. I'll just want to make sure that everything is alternating as I move around the log cabin block. As in the example I showed you earlier, we'll want to make sure that none of the same colors or close prints are touching in this scrappier version. One tip with working with a jelly roll or any type of pre-cut like this, do not wash these ahead of time. It will create a giant disaster. And I usually don't starch these even though I usually starch all of my fabrics before a project. I found that it often distorts the width of the strip and I don't want that when I'm using a jelly roll because I'm trying to save time usually using a pre-cut because it's the same width. But in certain situations you'll have the creases in the fabric and maybe some wrinkles, anything like that. And I just press those lightly with my iron. Do not iron back and forth because you will stretch and distort your fabric. Just press those creases and wrinkles out and you should be fine. If you do choose to starch your fabrics in a pre-cut, then I just encourage you to measure them after you're finished so that you can make sure that they still measure the same original width. So now what I've done is I have separated out 13 of the different prints that I want to use. And we'll need to put these in order of how we will use them in our clockwise layout for the block. Again, we want to make sure that no similar colors or prints are touching. So what I like to do is essentially just lay them out so I can see the colors in order. Of course, they'll be in a different direction as we're sewing them, but you get a better idea if you're just laying everything out, being able to tell if something is too close to another before you cut anything. So planning of your fabrics is really important before you begin any cutting. And you'll see I've got somewhere I'm just alternating a few of the colors and some of the fabrics. I'll bring the green over here to mix this up a little bit. You can see these are getting a little too similar. So I'd like to interchange a few of these too. And I just play with these until I'm happy with the general layout of the fabrics. And again, this is just to get a visual idea before we cut anything. Okay, and I am happy with these layouts and get these all straightened out so you can see a little bit better. And again, we're just looking to make sure that nothing is too similar or overlapping. And I'm happy with this. So a traditional log cabin block would typically have either a yellow or a red center. The red center was usually symbolizing the hearth of the home and the yellow center would represent the light shining through the window of the home. Now, I'm not necessarily making a traditional block today, but I do want to start with my mustard yellow color for the center. So I know that I'm going to start here from the center and work my way through these fabrics. So what I like to do is stack everything up so I don't get anything, anything out of place since I've laid everything out in the color that I like. 
and then I'll just put that stack to the side to prepare for my cutting. And then I'll take my first strip and in your cutting instructions, we know that our center is going to be two and a half inches. Now, another tip for you when working with a pre-cut of any type where you have these pinked edges, it's always smart to take a ruler when you may be confused if you should measure and sew from the peak or the valley of the pinked edge and measure it to see where the manufacturer was actually measuring from. So I have my ruler here that I can just hold up. And if you can see, I've lined up the top of my edges and it's just slightly over two and a half. So if I move it to measure at the valley of those pinked edges, you can see that it's just measuring at the two and a half inch mark. So for my reference, I can aim within the valley of those edges when I'm cutting and sewing. So now let's start cutting our fabrics. I'm going to show you one of my favorite rulers to work with. This is a Creative Grids two and a half by 24 and a half inches. And I love working with this if I'm cutting strips or binding, anything like that. It's really handy. And so it will definitely come in handy today as well as we're cutting these long strips. It's not a requirement, but it's something that just helps me work a little bit better than you don't have to worry about moving the ruler too many times to get your cut. And I need to cut this selvage off. And there we go. And that's going to be our center block. And if we were labeling these, this would be our A piece. And I'll just put it to the side. And when I put my fabrics to the side, because I want them to stay in order, then I will actually put it face down so that I can stack everything up. And then when I go to sew, I can turn everything over and my first block is on top ready to go. And I'm just going to continue cutting my fabric pieces and I'll meet you back over here. Okay, I'm back and I have all of my squares and strips cut. As I mentioned, I like to start with my smaller blocks and have these in order down to my longer blocks. And then I will take this to my sewing machine for this one particular block. And then that way I don't get my fabrics confused or the lengths and everything is ready to sew. I can just take from the top and sew and continue on. Another tip for you is when making log cabin blocks, I find it's much easier to have my ironing station right next to me because you will be pressing after each seam. So I like to use my portable ironing board and mini project iron right next to my sewing machine. Also, once you're comfortable with the process and you're making more than one block at a time, you can chain piece your block to really save time. At that point, you are also able to press more blocks at once. Just make sure you don't get confused in your construction though. But if you are stacking your fabrics like I did today, you can literally just have your stacks in order next to your sewing machine, ready to chain piece through. But for today, I'm just going to sew this one particular block. So let's get started sewing our blocks together. I'm gonna to move these over to the side. And again, I chose the yellow mustard for the middle of my log cabin. And then the next square is also a two and a half inch square, and that will go to the right of my center block. When you're starting out making log cabin blocks, it may be easier to lay the blocks out in this way before you sew them so that you can make sure everything is in the right direction and the right side before you start sewing. I am going to turn these just a little bit so that my flowers aren't exactly next to each other. I think I like that layout better. So now what I'll do is I'll place these right sides together and then I will sew a quarter of an inch seam down this side. And if you open it up, you can see that I have my two squares together, my middle square and my first piece. And now I will press these. Remember, when constructing a log cabin block, we are always pressing towards the newest strip, or you can also remember this, that we're always pressing away from our center block. So in this case, my seam will be pressed 
in this direction because we'll be pressing towards the newest sewn piece away from the center block. Okay, and now I have that pressed, you can see, towards the new green square, and we're ready for the next piece. So then I just go over to my stack, and again, because they're organized, I know where this goes. We're working in a clockwise direction, so the next piece will be sewn on the bottom. You always want to make sure that you're using the right strip, double checking in the length, and then we'll place it right sides together. And then we're going to sew a quarter of an inch seam down this line. And there we have our seam sewn. And if you open it up, there's our block so far. And then I'm going to press this. And remember, press towards the newest sewn block away from the middle. So we'll be pressing in this direction. And there I have my block pressed in the proper direction. One tip that I have for you when sewing log cabin blocks is sometimes your feed dogs can unevenly feed the fabric through. And you may notice that you're starting to have a little bit of extra fabric here where it didn't line up completely after sewing. And so what I like to do after each section that I'm sewing is just double check and make sure that everything is lined up. As I move through this block, if I have that, then I may trim or I might just line things up to make sure that I'm accounting for that little bit of unevenness in my fabric. But just keep an eye on that as you're moving through your block. So again, moving in a clockwise direction, I grab my next strip and place that right here. And I don't know that I have a preference which direction this face is. I think I like this. So then we'll place it right sides together. And also a quarter of an inch seam down this line. And I have pressed that away from the center block. And we're looking great so far. The next piece will go here. And I'll place that right sides together and sew a quarter of an inch seam. And I'm going to go ahead and go through the rest of these blocks and finish up my log cabin in the same way. Now we are all finished. Take a look at this beautiful block that I made. And it came together so quickly because we were using those pre-cut strips. And as I mentioned, all of the seams are pressed away from the center block towards my newer strip in each direction. So the block lays nice and flat. And isn't that gorgeous? Those fabrics are gorgeous as well. Now here's a little tip for you. If you aren't using any type of pattern, but you want to make a full quilt with log cabin blocks, you'll need to do a little quilty math. Since our blocks finish at 14 inches using the dimensions that I provided, you'll need to decide how big of a project you want to make, then calculate the size for your rows and columns, and then you'll know how many blocks you need in your project. Multiply the number of each size by the number of blocks that you need, and then that's it. You'll have, you'll have the necessary number of strips that you need in the different sizes, and that's it. Just make sure that you have enough fabric and start sewing. This is also a fun scrap busting project as well. As I mentioned, you don't have to use a jelly roll. You can just work with your stash and sit down and cut as you go even. It's so quick and easy. And as I mentioned, this is a good project to use the quilt as you go method as well. Drop me a comment below and let me know how you like this tutorial. 
And if you enjoy tutorials like this and free patterns, then I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my channel to be notified when I post new videos and tutorials. Thanks for sewing with me today and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.